I just twist it off and close it because if you start squeezing on it, it can come out the top. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, this is food grade silicone. It's just simply to make that outside of the bag so I can work mm -hmm. with it. We have our hoods for our exhaust fans, just make sure we know we're on. Um, the switch is over there, and that's what's been working right now, but <laughs> they all still work, so most of the fumes and everything look out of the building, so you don't smell it, you know, so you smell it in the building. Mm -hmm. You probably smell it. Yeah. But many different, the blue smells, the blood red smells, um, we try to keep as much of it out as so possible. Yeah. And so, <coughs> essentially all all it's doing now is pulling vacuum, so it's going to pull the liquid down. Okay. You want to get all the air out of it, so you don't want to work too fast, but you've got to work somewhat fast to you want to set it off a little bit harder. Um, I know that I've got a lot of, you know, bulk up here. It's kind of, you know, you're just getting all the air out of it. You want to make sure that if there's any air in it, then right now, at this point, you want to pull it up. Air and water can run mm -hmm. so float to the top. And so you just kind of you know move that stuff around. You need to go down inside that white piece. Um that for two reasons to help fill up the space for the lock. It makes it tighter. And, and then you know just another one is if you see the color in there then you know you've got it tight enough to where mm -hmm. it needs to be. So I'll just a minute. And just the vacuum works on its own. And that tool will start doing. Let's just start going around, kind of working it down. So we will do it different ways. I usually start out with just my hands. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she don't want to do this for you. Huh? She don't want to do this for you. No. <laughs> no <just> <laughs> so the same thing, I'm letting the air vacuum pull the air out. And if you want to, you can, you can touch it. You're not going to hurt anything now. It's just. Well, it's like liquid oh, in a balloon. So cool. <laughs> and, and then you can see, you know, it's just <laughs> liquid inside of it. <clears throat> and what I'm doing now <clears throat> is part of it's pulling the air out of it, but just pulling mm -hmm. the, my resin down. Because I know my trim lines are going to be down here, and so I need to have the you know, resin in there. Mm -hmm. And so I pull it down so I got it just past my trim lines. I don't want a whole lot past my trim lines. And you just want to make sure you've got enough resin for all the cloth and the carbon fibers to absorb it. So that you don't have any air mist in between it. And so the first thing is to get everything covered. <coughs> Same thing as before, I'm going to push my air up. And any extra resin goes up with it. And that helps bring most of the air out of it. I know it's cold, but... <laughs> Sometimes it's back over here, it's hard to see. And you uh, won't be able to see it with the camera, but if you want to look at it, <clears throat> this little spot 
Mm -hmm. That's air getting into it. Oh. And see, I can push it up, and it comes right back. Oh. So that tells me one of two things. Either I've got a hole in my bag. Usually if you've got a hole in your bag that's sizable enough, you can pull the resin down, and it'll actually come out of the hole. It can be a pinhole that the resin just won't come out of, but it's still enough to suck air in. It can be in the, in the inner bag, or it can be in the outer bag. And I'll give it just another minute to see what... Sometimes you can just have, yeah, it's coming back. So we've got vinyl tape. Sticks to the PVA bags pretty well. And airs look to mess up your lamination, so I... I tend to put tape anywhere I see air. <laughs> and hopefully, with the tape on there, if it was in the out, outer bag, then that sealed it up and I won't get any more air. So I'm going to work real quick. Just going to push up as much as I can talk from here down, this isn't going to be seen, <coughs> so I don't have to worry about wrinkles in the bag and stuff like that. What I do have to worry about, I want as much resin out of it for <coughs> reasons from weight to going to be cosmetics later on because it will be inside from the way to finish. But, uh, I'm just taping up. There's the top of my silver piece that was coming out of it. So I'm going to get that pretty tight. I've got to know where that button is. So I'm going to get that pretty tight. So I can grind into it. So I can tape it off and pretty much done. <laughs> All the length in the socket is mostly your resin. Um, a lot of people would just walk away from it now, and what you get, and it might be grams of difference, but when you're talking about somebody's, somebody's got to be wearing it every day, um, 100 grams might be the difference between them telling, you know, if, if they yeah. can say this weighs too much, this weighs too little. So the socket's the only real aspect from us reducing weight as far as, you know, components and feet and things like that. Most of those are about the same, and most of those are the components that we're going to use are about the same. So, before my resin starts setting off, um, it usually you start filling it up here when it takes off. But I'm going to draw as much resin as I can outside of my trim lines. Because all the resin really is doing is holding your layup together. So, it only needs so much for that. So the mm -hmm. less resin you have, it's the less weight you have. Okay. 